Okay, so we're going to do a circuit lab, a FET circuit lab. I'm going to give you some instructions as far as how to get started, um, how to make this work really well. So you can see that there's quite a few objects here. We have a wire. We can pull the wire out. We can make it long or short. And the blue is the electrons here, right? So um, there's a battery. We can control the battery voltage. We can make it bigger or smaller. Looks like a regular uh, AA battery. The um, one end here, I'm not sure I can draw on this. Nope, can't draw on this. The um, one end has a positive, the copper part is the positive end or the cathode, and the black end is the negative end or anode. We have light bulbs we can use. So you're going to end up using at least two light bulbs and a switch. We're going to use that. We're not going to get into resistors just yet, but um, we've talked about conductors. And um, so uh, in the video that we just did uh, to the, uh, the, on the 16th, so paperclip coin, paper, the, the metals are your conductors, your eraser, and your, what else did we have? Oh, paper dollar bill were insulators. All right, so your first step here is to make a series circuit Okay, so when we put these together, they connect. Now, to, to take them apart, I click on it and I can snap them apart, right? So a series circuit looks like a simple loop. So I'm going to connect this like here. Um, I'm going to put a switch um, let me put a little piece of wire here. You can make it any way you want, um, but you want to make it so that there's a loop. Now, again, as I've said before, um, you, in real life, you never want to connect a battery to um, a wire without anything in between. So if I click this, you notice there's fire. Fire will result. So you want to have something that um, is the device. It's going through a device. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to add my light bulb. Okay. Can I move it? There we go. Light bulb here. And I'm going to get another piece of wire here. Make this out, stretch this out. So a series circuit has two or more devices on this one loop. So um, I'm going to put a piece of wire here. So now I have a series circuit. Now I can add more to this. So if I wanted to, I could clip this, make this a little smaller, make this a little longer and put another light bulb in there. Okay. And then put some another piece of wire in between. So that is my completed. This is an open circuit because I haven't closed the switch. But if I were to cut the switch off, take it off completely, it would still be a an open circuit because I haven't completed the loop at all. Now I could connect these together without the switch, but it's always a good idea to have the switch included. So let's look at our uh, instructions here on the assignment. All right, so it says FET circuit construction DC series, series in parallel. 
complete the assignment while you're playing with the circuit kit so we can play with that all right first name last name the fet open fet open the circuit construction kit we've done that if you have not done it already you need to have this open at the same time as the google form so i do it side by side and make these small enough so i can do both here's your link um, previously we looked at parts of a simple circuit now we will learn about the two main types of circuits, series and parallel. First, we're going to investigate series circuits. Open the FET simulation if you're not already done so. Create a circuit that looks like one large rectangle or loop. You must use only two light bulbs. Okay, so they want us to do two light bulbs, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Get rid of this, put it back. Okay um three wires so i've got one two got too many wires here so i'm going to get rid of this one that back wants to stretch for me all right get rid of that and one battery use only three pieces of wire one battery all right so we got three pieces of wire one, two. All right, so I don't need this one. Cut that one loose. All right, so one, two. And again, I'm not real particular on that. So we've got one wire. And we're going to get rid of this. We'll put this back here. Don't even need to switch. I've got four pieces of four wires, so we can get this right there. There. Move that out. So one, two, and three. Okay. Both light bulbs should light up and there should be no fire. Okay. Does that work? Both of them light up. There we go. I did not connect them correctly. So they both light up. Once the circuit is made, move on to the question. So to disconnect the pieces, right? You use that. We use the scissors. If you cannot get the bulbs to light up, you must make sure the connections are touching the parts of the circuit. So I noticed that I didn't do that. I had it touching the wire and not the other. So in this question, it says, You've created the series circuit. You would now, how would you describe the path of the circuit? Flow in your series circuit. Circuit is open. The electron flow along the path. The electrons split along two or more separate paths. The electrons travel in reverse, positive or negative terminals. Right, let's make some measurements in the table to the right you should see a tool labeled ammeter. ammeters. These will measure the current of the circuit in the unit called amps. Select the one shown. So we're going to use this one. Okay. Drag the crosshairs of the ammeter over the different parts of the circuit in the, bat the battery, the bulb, the wires. Okay, so the battery the bulb, and the wires. So is the current the same at all points? The current is higher at some points, some places in the circuit. The current cannot be measured by the ammeter. The voltage remains unchanged. Take notes. Take note of the current that you just measured and the brightness of your bulb, light bulbs. Now let's add a third light bulb to the circuit like the image below. Okay, so we're gonna add a third light bulb. So we're gonna break this one up.
All right, so we're going to put another light bulb here. And we have four pieces of wire. One, two, three, four. We're going to use a fourth piece of wire. All right, so let's take a look. Observe the brightness of the bulbs in the new series circuit in the situation in the simulation what happens to the brightness of the light bulbs when another one is added if needed go back and forth and between two the three of the bulbs and observe the brightness of the light bulbs increases when the bulbs are added the brightness of the light bulbs do not change or the brightness of the bulbs decreased when the bulbs are added Okay, so let's take a quick look at this. I'm going to take one light bulb out. And you'll notice that when I take a light bulb out, just like a Christmas, some Christmas lights, you tell you have a burned out light bulb and all the lights stop working. So there's the brightness here. Let's cut this one out. Put this one back. Notice the brightness there. Use the ammeter as before and measure the new current through the circuit. All right, so here is 0.23 at the bulbs 0.23. The wire says 0 0.23, 0 0.23, and 0.23. All right, so the current does not change with when the, th the third bulb is added. The current increases when the third bulb is added. The current decreases when the third bulb, bulb is added. Now let's measure the voltage to, to the right of the screen, drag the voltmeter to the blue area. There are two pencil shaped voltmeter leads you would take the measurement. The voltmeter will read the voltage between these two these two leads. First, let's take the voltage to the at the battery. You should place the red lead on the positive, and that's the gold, and the black lead on the negative. It says seven volts. Okay, if you make a mistake, what'll end up happening? If you put the one on here, it says negative seven. So it doesn't really matter as long as you realize that it should be positive. All right. So here is what we have done here. Note that the voltage on the battery. Now let's compare the what the voltage is across the light bulb. Okay, so let's do that. We'll put it here and here. 2.33 volts. So using the same leads in the voltmeter, drag the measure at one of the bulbs as shown. The voltage across the battery is the same as the voltage across the bulb. The voltage across the battery is less than the voltage across the bulb. The voltage across the battery is greater than the voltage across the bulb. So you can answer that question. Take the voltage across the other two. Okay, let's put it here and here. 2.33 and 2.33. The voltage across each light bulb is the same. The voltage across each light bulb is different. The voltage across the other two light bulbs are zero. Add up all the voltage across three light bulbs in your circuit. Does the total equal the voltage across? Yes or no? All right, so add a switch into your circuit similar to one shown. So we're gonna add a switch. And we're going to disconnect this and we're going to put our switch here. Let's try to move this bulb out of the way here. 
All right. Here's the switch. All the light bulbs go out when the series circuit is open. So opening and closing it, all only one light bulb will go out when the series so circuit is open. So the light bulbs are unaffected by the circuit, the series opening the series circuit. All right, so that is your information for the the series part. So I'm going to remove, I need to make uh, two loops. So I need to um, put the battery, I disconnected the battery, and I need two wires. So I'm going to disconnect this one, make it a little smaller, put this one here. I'm going to disconnect this one, put this one here, straighten it out going to get another wire here so this one takes a, a lot more wire than the series circuit is right and then I'm going to put one light bulb here so let's make this a little longer a little longer Put this one connect that Oops, I got the, the clip, this one out of the way. Got my, okay, light bulb, another piece of wire to this light bulb. Straighten this one out. All right. I'm going to disconnect this first for now. I made a complete, okay, so disconnect this, disconnect that. All right, so now I'm going to make another loop. Get this a little smaller. I'm going to move this back to here. Move the ammeter there. Another piece of wire here. And then I'm going to, okay, two more pieces of wire. and another piece of wire here all right so watch the electrons flow through the circuit so we're going to connect this battery here put this light bulb back all right so watch the electrons flow through the circuit how would you decide describe the current flow in the in a parallel circuit. The circuit is open. Electrons flow along one path. The electrons are split between two or more two or more separate paths. The electrons travel in reverse positive or negative terminals on the battery. All right, so you have a choice there. Use the ammeter we used when the series circuit Measure the current at the battery. Okay, so the amp meter, the battery, 1.4 amps. All right, and then we're going to measure the first light bulb, 0.7 amps, and the second light bulb, 0.7 amps. The current is the same across all points of the circuit. The current in the, at the battery is higher than the current across the, each individual bulb. The current is not flowing. The battery has a lower current than the individual bulbs. Okay. Add up the current from the two bulbs. Is it equal to the current across the battery? So 0 0.7, 0 0.7, does it equal to 1.4 amps? Make sure that you do you uh, note that the current and the brightness of the bulbs that you measured we are we uh, will add another bulb in parallel to the over the circuit like the image below what happens to the brightness of the bulbs okay so we're going to try and 
move this out of the way. All right, so let's con disconnect for the time being. And we're going to add another wire here, another wire there, another wire here, another wire there, and then one more bulb. Okay. So compare. All right, so now the question is, the brightness of the bulb has not changed when another bulb is added. The brightness of the bulbs has increased when the bulbs added. The brightness of the bulb has decreased when the bulbs are added. Measure the current across the third light bulb and the other two bulbs will, with the ammeter, describe the current. Okay, so we're going to take the current. Okay, this one says 0.7. This one says 0.7, and this one says 0.7. So the current across the third bulb is higher than the other two. The current across the third bulb is the same as the other two. The current across the third bulb is lower than the other two. Add up the current of the three bulbs. Does the total equal the current in the battery? 2.1 amps. Use the voltmeter to measure the, and the change, note the voltage on the battery, then measure the voltage on the first light bulb. Okay, so we're not using this anymore. Okay, voltage, measure the voltage on the battery. So the black goes to um, the negative and the red goes to the positive. So that's seven volts. And then for the first one, it's seven volts. Measure the voltage of the light bulb is labeled below. The voltage across bulb one is higher than the voltage across the battery. Voltage across bulb one is lower than the voltage across the battery. The voltage across bulb one is the same as the voltage across the battery. Okay, measure and compare the voltage across bulbs two and three. Voltage, seven volts. Voltage, seven volts. Add up the voltage across one, two, and three. Does that add up to or equal to the voltage across the batteries? Now we add uh, a, a, some switch to delete uh, the third wire. Okay, so we're going to get rid of uh, one of the three wires. Put the switch in the in one of. Uh, of their places. Okay, so we're going to take the switch. We're going to take this out. Delete this. Cut it. Cut. Cut. Put a switch. Okay, take this out. Put a switch in its place. Bring this, make this switch a little bit longer. Switch. There we go. So we've added a switch. Oh, putting a switch in each place. Okay, got it. Cut. Cut. Cut this one. Cut this one. All right. Close the switch. I left to bulb number one. Click here. All right. The current flows around the loop bulb one. Only one bulb lights. The current flows for all bulbs. Only one bulb lights. The current flows around loops. 
round the loops all three all the bulbs and all the bulbs light up the current does not flow open the switch next to bulb one and close the switch next to bulb two and answer that question the current flows around the loop for bulb two and only bulb two lights up the current flows around loops of all the bulbs but only bulb two lights up the current flows around the loops of for all the bulbs and all the bulbs light up the current does not flow open the switch for two close the switch for three same question the current flows around the loops for bulb three and only bulb three current flows around the loops for all the bulbs but only bulb three lights the current flows around the loops for all the bulbs and all the bulbs light up the current does not flow close all the switches and the bulbs should light what happens to the current the circuit when the switch next to bulb one is open close all all of the switches all the bulbs should light right what happens to the circuit when the switch next to bulb one is open All the bulbs go out when the switch is open in, in a parallel circuit. Only two bulbs, only two and three, uh, are out when the switch is open. Only bulb one is goes out when the bulb switch is open in a parallel circuit. So every ever heard of the term don't blow a fuse? Fuses are used to in a circuit to prevent the circuit from overloading. When the fuse is supplied with a current past its rating, the metal inside that will melt, opening the circuit. Once the circuit is open, current stops flowing and the electronic, the electronic will stop working. The, this prevents more, often more important items in your electronics from being damaged. Make a circuit shown in the image below with five wires, one battery, one bulb, and a switch and a fuse. All right, so we're going to get rid of this. One battery. Okay, so one bulb. So we can get rid of this one. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. Oh, there we go. Get rid of this switch. Get rid of this bulb. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. Did a lot of stuff to go on here. Oops. Sorry about that. Cancel. Escape. I've overloaded the circuit here. <laughs>
You are currently the only person in this conference. Well, I'm back. So I'm starting to build this again. So I'm going to put a fuse in here, add a circuit, another wire, a bulb, and another wire. All right. So adjust the vol. Okay. So it says, ever heard of a don't blow fuse? Fuses are used in circuits to help prevent overloading. Adjust the voltage of the battery. Make a circuit, five wires, one battery, and one fuse. Okay. All right. So adjust the voltage of the battery. You're going to use a super powerful battery. So click on this. Adjust the voltage of the battery. Click on the battery and drag to 120 volts. All right. So the fuse was unaffected. The fuse increased the voltage. The fuse closed the circuit. The fuse opened the circuit. Close the switch and click on the fuse. We will replace the fuse. All right, so we're going to replace the fuse. So let's do that. There we go. We're going to put this fuse back. And again, this is important. Um, your house has fuses, but they, they're called circuit breakers. <laughs> oh, I, I have my voltage way too high. So it burned up right away. So this does um, help and save your devices. And I, 52 volts, so I'm going to bring it way down to like set 7 volts. I burned it out three times so far. There we go. All right. So 4 amps. The circuit is closed and the bulb has increased the current rating of the fuse to the maximum. Okay, so maximum 20 amps. Okay. What happens when you close the switch now? The circuit is closed and the bulb is very bright. The circuit is open. So let's see what happens here. Does that Oh, I, I messed up. I put the circuit rating in here. Let's do this. Let's do it again. I'm having too much fun. Put the fuse back in. I'm going to open the switch here so I don't mess up again. All right, so my amp rating. So four amps. Let's see, it was four amps was good. Didn't want to. All right, so, and let's see what happens when I adjust the amp rating up. Increase the current rating of the fuse to amp rating. So you can see the circuit is closed, the bulb is very bright. The circuit is open, the bulb is not lit. The fuse breaks and the bulb does not light. So I've increased the amp rating there. Now slowly drag the current rating down and find the minimum current rating before the fuse will break. All right, so the minimum fuse rating. Okay, I'm below four, three. Fuse at the fuse breaks at any current rating above six amps.
Okay, so what I had to do is I was having some struggle. I forgot to put 120 volts here. Okay, and I'm going to put the amp rating at maximum here. So the fuse is very strong. Okay, get really bright. And we're looking for the minimum amps before it blows. All right, so we're right here. Fuse will break at 12 amps. Let's see if that works at 12 amps. Nope. Fuse will break at 14 amps, so it didn't break at 14 amps. Okay, so the fuse breaks at a rating of 6 amps. The fuse breaks at a current rating below 12 amps below 14 amps or below 15 amps. Okay, so we had that. All right, and then it says the final one, fuses are good for large currents from flowing through expense, from flowing through expensive documents, electronics. What are some of the cons that might be associated? Fuses lower the current, decrease the power of the item. Fuses break and then replacing them whenever they are triggered. Fuses will explode and damage the electronics. If it's too close, fuses reduce the voltage provided. All right, so I think that fuses break and need replacing whenever they're triggered. So it can be difficult in that particular case. You have to break them apart. All right, so that is it for the video.